dating back to 2014, there is an average of three and a half wide receivers per year that break out into top 12 fantasy football status. And I'm sure that we all want to get the next Nico Collins or the next Puka Nakua. We want to find those late to mid round guys that are going to absolutely provide so much value for our fantasy football teams. That's what we're doing today. The data and the charts are going to show you guys what I have done over the past 10 years to find fantasy football breakouts at the wide receiver position. So go down there, drop a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel to show your support. So if you saw the video I did about breaking down running backs and trying to find those breakouts, this is going to be very similar as far as the qualifiers go for the fantasy football breakouts at the wide receiver position. There's three total qualifiers here that we need with the wide receivers in order to consider them breakouts because that's the biggest thing is we're not making sure we're making sure that we're not getting guys who were the wide receiver 14 last year and broke into wide receiver 12 territory and calling those guys breakouts that doesn't comply with the breakout rules in order to be a fantasy football breakout you need to play at least 10 games that's the first thing you need to do you need to actually make an impact on somebody's fantasy football roster in the upcoming year you also need to be a top 12 wide receiver in fantasy football like i said we're not going to just get a guy who was the wide receiver 48 last year and who's going to be the wide receiver 20 this year and call him a fantasy football football breakout we have to have those top 12 guys in order to consider them real breakouts because those are the guys that are going to give us the actual fantasy football value on our teams. And the last thing we need is those guys need to finish at least 10 spots higher than their previous year's finish. So when we go through these guys on the screen right now, all these guys, they had a finish that was at least 10 spots lower in the previous full season or they were rookies so let's go ahead and just get into this list right now so obviously as you can see this is a ton of names right here we're not going through all these names right now what i wanted to do is i want to just show you the most important categories so one of the biggest things that we found with running backs a couple videos ago was age was a big factor and it actually was really interesting to me age actually mattered more at the wide receiver position when it came to fantasy football breakouts than it does with running backs here so what we can see on the list right here is that there was zero absolutely zero guys out of the 35 guys that were logged as fantasy breakouts between 2014 and 2023 zero of them broke out after the age of 28 that's insane like we had raheem mostert as a 31 year old breakout at the running back position <laughs> like and that's so counterintuitive to what we usually think about running backs versus wide receivers as far as their fantasy football longevity goes usually wide receivers last a little bit longer when it comes to breaking out though wide receivers you've got to do it before generally the age of 25 because only 25.7 percent of these wide receivers broke out after the age of 25. Sanders, Doug Baldwin, Adam Thielen, Marvin Jones Jr., and Mike Williams all broke out at 27 years old. It was actually kind of an interesting thing that we had quite a few 27-year-old breakouts. DJ Moore, Cooper Cup, Devontae Parker, and Robert Woods all broke out at 26 years old. Now, I wanted to highlight a couple more points when it came to the age here. And one of the things that you'll notice here is the age 25 and age 23. We had our most amount of fantasy football breakouts. And I kind of had a feeling of why this might be. So the age 25 is around the time where most wide receivers are going to be seeking a contract extension. And three out of those seven guys signed extensions after they broke out. Afterwards, Deontay Johnson, Hunter Renfro, and Debo Samuel, all of them signed big extensions after the fact that they broke out. So there may be some incentive there, likely probably was, to be a top 12 fantasy football player. Not necessarily fantasy football player, just being an excellent wide receiver in general. Now the age 23, four out of the seven of those guys who broke out were second year wide receivers. So a lot of the times, like they're gonna be guys who are coming into their second year and two out of the seven were in their third year. So that accounts for almost 100% of these guys, with the exception of Michael Thomas, who was actually a rookie here. So those were the big takeaways I had as far as age goes. We need to get a guy who's before 20, 27 years old to have a shot of breaking out into top 12 territory in fantasy football right here. Now, the next thing we need to look at here is what is the opportunity? That's a massive part about what 
if a fantasy football breakout is going to happen at the wide receiver position, at the running back position, at the tight end position. You need opportunity. And I'm not necessarily talking about volume either. Volume we'll get into a little bit later on. Opportunity here is what was their situation looking like heading into the season that they broke out as wide receivers in fantasy football. Now, a lot of these guys, what you'll notice right here is a lot of them were drafted to be the guy. Mike, you know, Mike Evans was drafted to be the guy. Odell was drafted to be the guy. Jamar Chase was drafted to be the guy. Some of these guys also saw situations where there was a wide receiver one, a wide receiver two that was in front of them on the depth chart. They ended up bouncing and the spot opened up. And not only a spot opened up, but targets opened up as well. So you'll see some of that on this list as well. Now, also, some of the guys you'll see were signed to be free agents and be big wide receiver contributors on their new team. So they were new guys on new teams. They were signed to be important contributors as a wide receiver here. Now, and then some of these guys, you'll also see that they had been starting and they'd kind of been building up their resume. And then they finally took that major leap the year that they broke out. So opportunity is a big thing that we obviously need to consider here. Now, the volume of these guys is also one thing that I took in mind. Now, all these guys, we won't dive into this too far. Let's just say that they all were over 100 targets, and obviously that adds up because very rarely are you going to get a wide receiver one in fantasy football who does not exceed 100 targets at the very minimum, at the very minimum. Now, the next thing I wanted to look at was how many of these guys were rookies? There were six total rookies out of 35 of these guys. So it's it's pretty rare. Like, it's, it's a very rare thing. Most of these guys... Like I said, coming into their second year, third year, maybe fourth year, looking for that new contract extension here. And then I think one of the most predicting factors right here, after the fact that we determined whether they were rookies or not, is if they were not rookies, what was their previous full season like as far as the volume goes? Now, one of the biggest takeaways that I had when it came to this particular thing was that there was only one veteran player that had below 70 targets. It was a fantasy football breakout. So that means that no, there was no player that was a veteran that had below 60 targets the year prior to them breaking out. So the minimum, the absolute bare minimum, and you wanna have at least 80 targets, the bare minimum is 70. You need to have 70 targets in 2023 in order to be considered a 2024 breakout. And there was only two guys below 80 targets. There was only two guys on this entire list of 35 that had below 80 targets in their previous year to the fantasy football breakout. So long story short here, you are primarily trying to find a guy who has around 85 to 90 targets in their previous year at least, because there's very rarely gonna be a guy who was a role player who got like 70 targets in 2023, coming into 2024 as a massive breakout. You're not not going to see a guy who had 30 targets in a 16 or 17 game span come into 2024 and be a breakout here. So that was a major, major takeaway here. So here are the big things that we need to do, identify with a breakout coming into 2024. You need to have at least 70 targets in 2023. You also need to be below 28 years old. Those two things, 0% of them were either above 28 or below 60 targets in 2023. So as you can see on the screen, the list I have compiled here today, after I went through all of that data, all the data I just presented to you, this took me days to figure out and put it all together. These are the guys that I have identified just based on the data that we just went over that have a shot and fit this criteria as a potential fantasy football breakout at the wide receiver position. Now, what you'll notice kind of right out of the top of this list is you've got a couple rookies. Like I have to include these rookies on here because the rookies I've included, they have real serious potential opportunity. Keon Coleman could easily be a hundred plus target guy right away in 2024. And he's playing for the second best quarterback in the NFL. He has to be on this list. Jalen Polk, don't love him as much, but there's no clear wide receiver one in New England. Troy Franklin, Brian Thomas Jr., Xavier Worthy, they're all kind of relatively in the same class for me. Not because they're all draft capital similar. Like, obviously, Troy Franklin was the fourth rounder this year, and those other two guys were first rounders, but it's all because there's kind of a messy wide receiver room in each of those particular guys' class right here. And then Ladd McConkey, you have to put him on here as well. 22 years old, coming into an offense with no clear wide receiver one and a great top 10 quarterback in fantasy football. And then obviously, you've got to include the 
top three guys. Malik Neighbors, drafted to be the guy in New York. Romo Dunze, not necessarily drafted to be the guy, but super, super talented and with a talented quarterback now. And then Marvin Harrison Jr. Spoiler alert, I'm all in. <laughs> I will be drafting Marvin Harrison Jr. on underdog, as you should as well. But it is also important to keep in mind, there was only six rookies in the past 10 fantasy football seasons out of 35 breakouts that broke out their rookie year. It is very important to note that as well. And then there's obviously some guys that just have some targets opening up just because other guys have left. George Pickens, Deontay Johnson left. He should be dominating the targets in Pittsburgh this year, barring any kind of addition to any other wide receivers. Maybe Brandon Ayuk. I don't know as of right now. Quinn Johnston and Josh Palmer. I don't love either of those guys as players, but we have to acknowledge their top two wide receivers just left the building this offseason. So there's all kinds of opportunities here opening up in Los Angeles as well. I also forgot to mention this earlier as well. There was two guys out of the 35 that saw massive quarterback upgrades the year that they broke out. Nico Collins and Tyree Kill. Those are the two guys that saw massive quarterback upgrades on here. And that obviously is a factor when it comes to finding a wide receiver breakout in fantasy football. Now there's two guys on here that obviously fit that specific criteria. Garrett Wilson and Drake London. They obviously fit that criteria in a big way simply because their quarterbacks are, sh they should be much better than what they've had since the first two years of their NFL careers. And then the last thing I'll note on this particular thing when I'm trying to identify breakouts right here is there's another category I'm looking at and that is the guys who might be wanting contracts after 2024. The guys that I'm thinking want contracts. Garrett Wilson. I believe if Garrett Wilson has a great year, he's probably going to be bucking for a contract from the New York Jets. He's already got a big body of work with garbage quarterback play. So if he does well with Aaron Rodgers this year, he's going to be bucking for a contract. T. Higgins obviously will be bucking for a contract. Assuming that he plays this year, but I'm sure that he will be bucking for a contract. Drake London and Chris Olave also fit in that category of guys who are probably going to be looking for potential contract extensions after this particular season as well. Now, outside of those categories that I just went over, there's two more categories that I wanted to isolate certain guys in that I believe have the highest upside and the that are the best values in fantasy football drafts right now on underdog based on ADP and what position they're being taken at in fantasy football drafts right now. So as far as the highest upside goes, a couple of these guys are pretty obvious. Gary Wilson, Drake London, I think we're all in agreement they have the highest upside for sure. I'm not huge on drafting Drake London. I have not drafted any of him actually. That's because the price is too high for me. I'm not doubting that he could be a top 10, top 12 wide receiver. I just want to see it first before I invest a first, second round pick on a guy like Drake London in underdog drafts. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. has tons of upside right away. I have no reservations with Marvin Harrison Jr. with the draft price he's at. I'm taking him right now. We'll continue to take him. I love Marvin Harrison Jr. Like I said, Keon Coleman, Ladd McConkey, I think they have upside just simply because of the fact that they should come in and at least, at the very least, see like 80 to 90 targets in their rookie seasons. Not super high upside, but if anything hits right, they could easily become 100, 110 plus target guys in their rookie seasons right here. Jane Reed, Jordan Addison, Chris Olave, those are other guys that I think have lots of upside in fantasy football this year. Jane Reed, I think, is the best of the bunch of Green Bay, and he also sees targets and carries as well on top of the targets. And then Jordan Addison, been shouting about him all offseason, love the value as well. And he obviously fits into my best values category as well. Love the value for Jordan Addison. Wide receiver 39 on underdog. If there is one guy, one guy, I advise my audience to draft, it's Jordan Addison. Draft him today on underdog, man. I don't know how his price is that low. I really don't get it here. I also think Keon Coleman, great value as well. Wide receiver 41. If you don't have access to Jordan Addison, go ahead and grab him. Lad McConkey, Romo Dunze fall in that same range as Jordan Addison. Wide receiver 40, Lad McConkey. Wide receiver 38, Romo Dunze. Think they're both great values as well. Love that upside with their values here. And then two late round flyers that I think I've taken a bunch of these guys, both of them. I've taken Leggett more than Demario Douglas, but I think Xavier Leggett and Demario Douglas, they're both super good late round flyers as wide receiver breakouts here. I don't think their upside is tremendously high, especially Demario Douglas, but at the wide receiver 79 and the wide receiver 65, 
why would you not draft these guys when they do fit the criteria of a fantasy football breakout at the wide receiver position so let me know what you think of the research in the comments below and who you are drafting and avoiding in 2024 fantasy football drafts